Okay, this is part two of the uh, global winds notes. So you had that whole blank page to fill in where you just got a big circle on it. And before we start, though, just remember yesterday we talked about how we have these different wind belts. So here's a wind belt. Hot air is rising by the equator, moving out, down, and in. And then there's other air masses that typically rise up here moving out, down, and that causes these different winds on the surface of the Earth. So those winds are always typically there. It acts as this very predictable way to, to tell where the wind is coming from. So here's the first part of your notes. The wind belts that surround the Earth make winds that are very predictable. These are the prevailing winds. What does prevailing mean? If something is prevailing, winning. winning? Winning's not a bad way of thinking about it. Um, typically, this is the norm for how things are going. So, the prevailing norm of this class, the prevailing attitude right now is that we're going to write these notes down right away. That's the prevailing thought. So, let's see how this works. First thing we're going to add to our diagram here is the wind belts. And at the equator, you've got hot air rising, moving up, hot air rising, moving in that direction. And of course that wind belt finishes by cooling off and sinking back to the equator. Okay. Well, That causes winds that are in this direction. But if winds are going in this direction, what way does the Coriolis effect end up making them go? What do you think? Take a wild guess. Is it that way or that way? Is it way one or way two? Take a guess. Anyone else have a guess? Way one? Who says two? Who says one? It is one, actually. Wow, most of you got it. The Coriolis effect up at the northern hemisphere makes it curve to the right or clockwise. And so we have these winds that go that way. But the southern hemisphere, it's kind of the same thing. Winds end up curving to the excuse me to the left down here or counterclockwise these ones are curving to the right at the top those are curving to the left these are called the trade winds right so in geography history any of those classes if you've talked about the trade winds you're talking about this these curved winds and they're going from the what from the west or from the east yeah so the trade winds are from the east. Trade winds. So the trade winds come from the east. All right, so we have a couple more cells to figure out. We've got an air mass that's going up there and up here. Okay. The first one sinks moves up, the second one goes up to the pole, sinks, and comes back down. So there's a, some sort of line between there. Right. So the second wind, prevailing wind we have, is it going to be moving in the up direction or down direction, Hannah? Up? Oh. Yeah, so the up. And Believe it or not, it's just like these arrows. They're just reversed. So instead of being downward, it's upward just like that. So it looks like this. Okay, so this wind ends up going this way. Which way does our weather usually come from? Is it coming from North Dakota, 
moving in, or is it coming from Wisconsin, moving that way? You guys not watch the weather? Well, we live right here, or so. Which way would you expect to come from? From the west or from the east? It comes from the west, and that's what ends up happening. We have weather right now coming from the west. So here's a forecast, and you can kind of see, here's the whole United States. Everything is kind of jumping from the west and pushing to the east. And our weather, our weather typically goes to the west, to the east from the west. All right, so last one, up here. Kind of like the trade winds, except much colder, All right? At the very top, these are going to be called the polar easterlies. And the middle one is the prevailing westerly. Okay, now westerly, is it because it's going to the west or coming from the west? Remember how wind is backwards? Right, it's called a prevailing westerly because the, the wind and weather is normally coming from the west. And in, in our case, most of it's coming from the west. If we went down south of Mexico to Central America, most of the weather is coming from the east, so coming off of the Atlantic Ocean. Which way are hurricanes normally coming from? They kind of travel from Africa, they stay in this area, but then they start hooking around at the further north they go. If you look at hurricane tracks, they're moving along the trade winds normally, and then for some reason, and I'm not totally sure why, they start moving north and they can get hooked they can make it all the way up the eastern, eastern seaboard by following these prevailing westerlies up. So they're following these prevailing winds. Right? So we talked about the trade winds, the prevailing westerlies, and the polar easterlies. What I need you to do is fill in the bottom part, similar to the top. They have the same names, trade winds, prevailing westerlies, polar easterlies, but try to figure out where in which way these arrows end up need to go. Okay, two last points. Trade winds moving to the east, prevailing westerlies down into the west, or from the west, excuse me, and the polar easterlies look similar to the trade winds, again. Okay, <coughs> last point. Way up here. So between this wind belt and this wind belt. There is a spot right here. Okay? And remember, this is a sphere, so that spot is kind of like a halo going around right here. That spot is what we call the jet stream. Right? The jet the jet stream is what we're looking at when we looked at this weather map. Right here. This wind's moving slow or fast? They're moving insanely fast. And this jet stream greatly influences our weather. So you can see right now, it's going to start blowing down this way. What kind of air is going to start heading our way right now? What's it going to be like tomorrow? It's going to be a lot colder tomorrow than it is today because the jet stream is going to start pulling that Canadian air right straight down upon us.